Hey everyone, welcome back. And previously, if you saw an original version of this course, the only thing in the function section was the emissions challenge uh, redux and the emissions challenge solutions. Uh, and it occurs, well, to somebody else who then, you know, occurred it to me, that probably put a little bit more in the function section, just the same way that we described explicitly what the syntax of a while loop and a for loop and an if statement is and all those kinds of things. So let's formally talk about what a function is, how you should probably write your functions, and then we'll go over a couple of things, including the accumulator pattern, um, an introduction to the idea of scope, and then some brief data modeling before we get into the admissions challenge redux and all of that stuff. So this is directly from MDN. And I mean like, you know, Mozilla Developer Network. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to that site. Actually, I think MDN will get us there. This is a very, very good place to start searching when you're looking for something. If it's like, hey, I want to learn more about Slice, um, Chances are you're probably, well, blob.slice isn't really going to help us because we haven't learned about blobs yet. But the uh, slice method for an array was something that we went over. And this is where a lot of the definitions that I talk about uh, originate. It's basically like this is what it is. This is how you use it. Um, it can be a little bit tricky to figure out what's going on here. But you do want to figure that what's going on here is that when they put something inside of curly, or sorry, inside of a square bracket like this for the syntax, they mean it's optional. And what they mean is by it's being optional is that we could say array.slice, given some array called ARR, and not pass anything. And as we showed during the methods for arrays uh, section, that's just going to make a copy of the array. But you can also decide to slice it from a certain portion. So that's how they list optional parameters. And you also want to figure that there's always probably going to be a little bit in here that's a little over your head. Um, but that's not a big deal. Being exposed to things and reading it once, even if you don't understand it, will help you understand it better the next time. So I highly recommend that. But with that in mind, let's talk about uh, MDN's definition of a function. So fundamental building block, it's a JavaScript procedure. It's essentially a set of statements that are going to, quote, perform a task or calculate a value. So a function declaration or definition consists of a function keyword, that's this guy. Oh, wow, that is not what I meant to do. Uh, where did it go? That's this one. So that's the function keyword. Uh, the name of the function, which is right here. And then a list of possible parameters separated by commas in between these parentheses. Here are the statements that define the function. And one of the things that we're almost universally doing is we always say, okay, let's grab the stub of our function, which is this. So I'm gonna grab the stub of my function, put it over. And then I'm gonna grab the test. Now when I say test, what we mean by test at this point is we're gonna call the function save it to a variable, and then log that variable to the console and visually check if that's the result we thought we were going to get. So that's it. Um, if we define our functions this way, it's not going to matter if we move this around. You want to picture that when we're talking about scope, we mean the scope of index.js. So like everything inside of here has a current scope. And later on, we're going to find out that inside of a function has a scope too that is different than the scope inside of the entire section of code that we're currently in. But for now, let's not worry about that. We'll get to that in the next lesson. But there, you want to keep in mind that there are other ways to write functions. Now, I'm going to write one of those ways. Say variable name of function is equal to a function. And then, you know, here would be the list of parameters. And here would be the statements that define the function. Now, here's the issue. Uh, if I write my function this way, which is the way that I've been explicitly telling y'all to write it, uh, if I run this, I'm going to get undefined, but I'm not going to get a problem because it knows because the function keyword was used, it knows that the name of the function is a function and it knows what it does. Uh, you know, contrary to that, if I define my function this way, which if you'll think about it, is the exact same function that we just had and I run it, it's going to say name of function is undefined or no, name of function is not a function, which is actually a key difference than undefined because what happens is, is that name of function is actually saved into what we'll call scope memory. Uh, but we're not going to quote that term because it's not an actual term. It's just we're introducing you into what's going on as gently as possible. Um, so name of function is a variable that will have a, uh, like it will be like declared, but it's not a function. So when we try to call it as a function, we're going to run into a problem. And the reason is, is that it's not defined as a function until after line 14. After line 14, if we were to go ahead and call our function down there, uh, we're going to get that same undefined result because it returns undefined by default. 
So this is the other way to write functions. There are a couple more. For now, I wouldn't mess with it. I don't really think that there's anything that useful in learning how to write functions this way for now, just because it's easy to write functions this way once you've already become well-versed in writing functions uh, this way. So, uh, oh, last thing, less explicit challenges. So we had one of these. We had a convert score to grade where we just said, hey, here's what the function does, do it. Instead of it being like your function needs to use this method and it needs to do this with a variable and then return this exact thing. And the idea was that we're building a pattern that we are now going to use and apply to more and more complex problems. There's actually another pattern that we're about to introduce called the accumulator pattern, which is a very useful one. But in general, the problems are going to start being more in the line with um, uh, the convert score to grade one. If you're having problems, please feel free to go back to the earlier sections and try to do some research in the documentation. Um, otherwise, definitely feel free to shoot a message on Slack. So that's it for this lesson. We're going to get into functions for the rest of this unit. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.